hello! Today we are here to do the mid-year book freak out tag which is a perennial favorite here on booktube and it is not quite the middle of the year that is July 2nd but close enough so we're gonna go ahead and do this. I am going to try to restrict my navel gazing in this and make this truly like a tag and have this be pretty rapid fire. I will just say that upon reflecting through what I have read so far this year, I've realized that this doesn't, f it's a weird year because I don't feel like there are that many like super high highs, nor have there been a lot of super low lows. I feel like the average book I'm reading is a little bit better than my expectations. Like I feel like my average book is about a three and a half star, but I haven't had a ton of like five star, four and a half stars, not as many as I would have hoped or wanted. I did go through, like I'm still sort of coming out of a slump in the spring, so maybe that's a part of it. I don't know. But all that to say, just a general kind of commentary on reading so far this year. I definitely have things I'm excited to talk to you guys about, but as a whole, that is my comment. So without further ado, we will try to keep this going pretty quickly here. So straight out the gate, the first question is, what is the best book you've read so far this year? My actual answer to that is this book, but because it's going to be my answer to the next question, I will say my second best book that I've read this year is The Fire Next Time by James Baldwin. It made me weep, and it's a classic of nonfiction for a reason, especially the letter to his nephew just like destroyed me in the best possible way. Highly recommend. It's very short. Not, I, I was gonna say very easy to get through. It's, it is in the sense of it's not difficult language. It's not dense prose. The thoughts in it are pretty thought provoking, but it is not a overly difficult piece of literature to read other than the kind of content and emotional components in it deeply affected me and I really loved it. Then the second question is what's the best sequel you've read and I that by definition uh, the fifth book in a five book series is a sequel so Percy Jackson and the Last Olympian this is my favorite book I've read so far this year it is such an appropriate ending to that original five book series the fact that it's called the Last Olympian and thematically what that means kills me I loved the plot I loved the character I loved everything about this book and I can't really tell you much about it because it is the last book in the series but this is my favorite book so far this year. What, and by the way I'm making my way through the Heroes of Olympus and once I'm done with that Ashley is going to come on from Bookish Realm and we're going to do a live show about both series so I'm excited for that. Next question is a new release that I've not yet gotten to that came out this year that I need to. Well one is Blood Air by Alona Andrews right up here which is the first in a spin-off series of Kate Daniels, which is probably my all time favorite series. So I need to get to it. I've been sort of like saving it up. And I don't I don't know, do people do this with books they're really excited about? I've been sort of saving it up. Similarly, the reason I haven't yet read Amari and the Night Brothers by B.B. Alston is because I'm saving it for the moment where I'm like perfectly in the mood so that I can just enjoy it for what I'm sure is going to be just a delightful ride. So those are the two books that I've not yet gotten to that were released this year that I really want to get to. Most anticipated book for the back half of the year? Honestly, there's a lot of books I'm excited for. Um, I'll talk more about that later in July. A lot of the books that I was really pumped for have already come out. I would say if I had to pick one that I'm most excited for, I probably would say The Heart Principle by Helen Huang, just because we had a year off from her little Kiss Quotient series, and I'm really excited about the hero for this one. I have a digital arc of it, so really I just... I'm probably gonna read it here in the next couple of weeks and I'm really excited to get to it. It comes out I believe at the end of August so I will say that's probably of things that are actually confirmed to come out this year probably my most anticipated though actually I will say tied now that I'm thinking about it. I will say Sam's book in the Ice Home series. I think I know who her hero is. I hope I know who her hero is and if it's who I think it is. I think that will be a really good book. So I will say that's my other anticipated one. I believe that one's out in September. Biggest disappointment of the year? I'm gonna say generally the Lord Peter Whimsey series from Dorothy L. Sayers. Guys, I was expecting this to be like some yummy, delicious mystery candy for me this year that I was just gonna get to just savor and enjoy with y'all. And that is not how it turned out. I guess I'll say Whose Body because that has been the most disappointing of them so far, but I'm not, I'm gonna DNF that series. I did finally finish all the books I wanted to read in that series so I can at least sort of like 
be done. But that is that was a real bummer and I'm sorry. Like that's, you know, sometimes when you pick something for a group read you've not read before, it doesn't work out the way you were hoping it would. So that has definitely been the case for that series, unfortunately. I had books in it that I really did enjoy. So like The Nine Tailors I thought was good. And I I believe that I, if I went back and read Gaudy Night and Busman's Honeymoon, I would still really enjoy those. But um, yeah, just not, not as good as I was hoping, sadly. Biggest surprise, I'm gonna say two. I'm gonna say Dead Dead Girls by Nikessa Afia, just because I was expecting it to be somewhat of a cozy historical mystery. And it actually ended up being a pretty hard hitting serial killer thriller set in 1920s Harlem. Really recommend, I thought it was a very strong debut, but it just wasn't the kind of book that I thought it was gonna be. And then The Tenant of Wildfell Hall by Anne Bronte. Just knowing what the setup of this book was, I thought that I knew what the titular tenant's backstory might be. And I was completely wrong about that and in a way that delighted me. Like I really loved where this book ended up going in terms of the themes it explored. The things that it was tackling in its time I think are fascinating. Like I love this book. This is one of my favorite reads of the year. Um, but it really surprised me in terms of like going there in a way that I didn't think it would. Next is favorite new author, either a debut or sort of like new to you. I'm gonna take this in two directions. One, a new author who I now consider to be an auto buy is Peta Jelly Clark, just because I tried Ring Shout last year. And then I think actually the first book in the series at Dead Jen and Cairo might have been the last book I read in 2020. But the first book I read in 2021 was The Haunting of Tramcar 015. And then I also read A Master of Jen. And between all of that, he is just an auto buy author for me at this point. I love his world building, his storytelling. It's all just really, really wonderful, dense, imaginative, fun, thematically rich, great characters. I just really love what he does. So I would say he's my new auto buy author. And then I would say that in terms of an author I found, I would say Honey Phillips, because while her stuff is not as good as Ruby Dixon, like it's just, it's not in my opinion, but I think it's the closest thing to Ruby Dixon I've found. And she has such a big backlist that it's been fun for me to like start diving into it and have something that's at least approaching the vibes and the delight of a Ruby Dixon book. So I would say she's my other favorite new to me author. Newest fictional crush, not really something I do, but if I had to say, I do love the hero in Last Guard by Nalini Singh, um, Canto Mercant. I just love him. If he were a real man, he'd be my type for sure. He's pretty dreamy. Anyway, I can't wait for you guys to read that book. It's really, really good. Comes out in July, strap in, it's great. I also recently interviewed Nalini Singh. So if you wanna hear more about that book, I will try to remember to link that somewhere. And then favorite new character, again, technically we met her, I met her at the very end of 2020, but really 2021. And I would say that is Fabma Elsha Arawi, I believe is how you say her last name. She is the detective in the series. She is a dandy. She is queer. She is smart. She is fabulous. She's a great family member. She's just great. I love her. Great detective, great main character, down to read pretty much anything that she's starring in. Then a book that made me cry. I already mentioned The Fire Next Time by James Baldwin definitely made me cry, particularly in that letter to his nephew. And then the other one I'm going to say is The Firekeeper's Daughter by Angeline Bully. This is a hard hitting YA it's like between a YA contemporary and a YA thriller. It's it's definitely a thriller, but it reads more like a hard hit hitting contemporary. Man, all the content warnings, like everyone you can think of, like racism, essay, abuse, substance abuse, like just everything. It has this and it ripped my heart out and put it back together. But I wept reading this book. It is so good. My mom read this recently upon my recommendation. She couldn't put it down. She read it in like two days, which is unusual for her. It is so, so good, but it is also very emotional. So strap in for that. And then a book that just made me happy. I'm going to say Fugitive Telemetry by Martha Wells, because this is Murderbot literally solving a murder mystery. The, could this be more squarely aimed at me? It could not. And I don't think that this is the best in the series, but it's maybe the most fun in the series. And it just made me smile. I had a great time reading this one. And then most beautiful book I've bought, I would actually say I just got this big, beautiful bind up of the monstrous, the first three volumes of monstrous. But since it's art that I already had, I'm going to say Monkey King by Wu Qingyin. This is one of the latest uh, Penguin Clothbound classics. 
designed by Coralie Bickford Smith and I just love the color story in this one as well as like that um, wave pattern that's obviously inspired by the source material. So I'm gonna say this is the most beautiful one that I got. And then in terms of things I need to read, well, in terms of my 21 books that I want to read in 2021, I'm actually doing pretty well on that because I'm now done with all the Dorothy L. Sayers stuff. I also read both of the Robin Hobb books on that list. And I think I read one other one, but I do want to keep making progress on that. So for instance, I want to finish off Heartstone's trilogy from L. Catherine White. So I want to read both of those. I want to finish up the Scythe trilogy from Neil Shusterman. I still have, I'd say, probably nine books left on that list that I want to finish up this year. So I want to do that. Now that I'm done with the Dorothy L. Sayers project, I have some more sort of like mood reading room for classics. So I have read a few classics. You've already heard me talk about a couple of them so far this year, but I want to focus more on that for the rest of the year and make my way through my classics TBR for the year because I'm really hoping I can read a lot of those. So fingers crossed that like I can get some energy and mojo around that going. And then uh, I also want to focus more on my Nora Roberts reading project, reading Roberts, in particular year one, and this has Irish thoroughbred in it for reasons that you guys will be hearing about very soon, these two in particular, but um, I'm also looking to read a lot of Nora Roberts for the rest of the year, at least I'm hoping to. So between that and then the arcs that I still need to read, not as many, but I do still have a few that I'm hoping to get to, that will be a pretty full reading list. So that is my mid-year freakout tag. I think I kept that moving pretty snappy, so good job me. Let me know how your reading has gone so far this year. Let me know that in the comments below. And yeah, I think that that will do it for me. So if you enjoyed this video, please like, subscribe, follow me on the social meds if you're so inclined. I have all that information listed in the description box below, including merch, by the way. I just put up some merch for the first time, so check that out if you are interested. That link is in the description box. And yeah, that will do it for me. Hope you're having an absolutely lovely day and I'll talk to you soon. Bye.